O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Welcome brothers and sisters to our celebration today. Today is the Sunday of the Word of God. Uh, Pope Francis inaugurated this feast or this, this day of special focus this time last year. And the Bible is not meant to be uh, the privilege of a few, Pope Francis reminds us. He says it belongs to those called to hear its message and to recognize themselves in his word. The Bible can't be monopolized or restricted to a select group either. He continues, the book of the Lord's people, it's the book of the Lord's people who in listening to it move from dispersion and division towards unity. So as we begin to celebrate this Sunday of the Word, we call to mind our sins, and of course during this uh, week of prayer for Christian unity, we remember our own sins against the unity of the church. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations to the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You come again in glory with salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord was addressed to Jonah. Up, he said, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach to them as I told you to. Jonah set out and went to Nineveh in obedience to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a great city beyond compare. It took three days to cross it. Jonah went on into the city making a day's journey. He preached in these words. Only 40 days more and Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed in God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior, and God relented. He did not inflict on them the disaster which he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Saviour. Lord, make me know your ways. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, our time is growing short. Those of you who have wives should live as though they had none, and those who mourn should live as though they had nothing to mourn for. Those who are enjoying life should live as though there were nothing to laugh about. Those whose life is buying things should live as though they had nothing of their own. And those who have to deal with the world should not become engrossed in it. I say this because the world as we know is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The kingdom of God is close at hand. Believe the good news. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boats, mending their nets. He called them at once, and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the men he employed, they went after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Listening to the Word of God at Mass today, we're made aware that our first calling, our first call, is to recognize that now is the moment of the kingdom and that we have to repent and believe the good news. You can't mistake that message when you listen to the gospel. But for Peter, Andrew, James and John, there was another call. We're reading the Gospel of Mark at the moment, and Mark is short on detail and very direct in saying what he wants to say. But today he includes a little bit of detail, which is a bit unusual for him. He says, as Jesus walked along the shore of the Lake of Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. And the same is true with the calling of James and John. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. When something momentous happens, we always tend to remember the details, don't we? For example, those of us who are old enough to remember the assassination of President Kennedy. We know what we were doing when the news came through that he'd been shot. When Princess Diana was in that terrible car crash in Paris. We remember where we were when we heard that news. 9-11, we remember where we were at that moment when we heard of the news of 9-11. And there'll be all sorts of other events in your own lives that as soon as you remember that event, you remember all the details that surround them. For these four, four fishermen, it was a momentous event in their lives and so they remembered all the details big events cause big memories the most important event in our lives was the day when we became sons and daughters of the father in Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit it was our baptism perhaps we don't have a strong conscious memory of that event but I believe that the, uh, that the actual event is etched into our memory. 
when the Father looked at us and said to each one of us at the moment of our baptism, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, my well-loved child, and I delight in you. I believe that that memory is somewhere deeply etched into our very being. In our journey towards a responsible adult faith, we have to claim our baptismal calling as our own. We have to hear the Father calling to us, and like the disciples, we have to respond. Jesus says to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. Sounds a little bit scary. How do I know that I am being called anyway? And to what am I being called? In some ways, it's true to say that you are here at this Mass because you have been called, just like Peter and Andrew were called, and James and John. You are here today because you're responding to God's call, God's voice. Not through angelic choirs or seeing visions, but God makes himself felt slowly and gradually, quietly, and very often through friends, through people we know, who know us well. The question is, how do we respond to that call? Peter didn't feel very holy. He didn't feel, uh, he felt he was just an ordinary person. He didn't belong to the strict religious sect of the Pharisees, for example. Jesus invites us to follow him, to respond to him, to answer his call, to be a catcher of people, a fisher of people. In other words, to bear witness by our lives to his presence and love in our world. And it's quite common to feel unworthy, just like Peter. We wonder what God is up to and think God has perhaps made a mistake by calling me, by calling you. But just think of the twelve, to, be put it, to put it in really uh, ordinary language, what a crew they were to a certain extent. So re- Peter, for example, Simon Peter, so reckless, always getting things wrong. Yet he was called to be the rock, the foundation. Simon the zealot, and zealot really is just another word for terrorist. Matthew the tax collector. Tax collectors were collaborators, a sort of quizlings. James and John, really hot-headed. Their nickname was Sons of Thunder. And Judas, the one who sold his master out. All of them deserted Jesus when the soldiers came to arrest him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yet all of them were chosen by Jesus, called by name to be his followers, entrusted by by him with the message of eternal life for the whole world and to bear much fruit. God doesn't make mistakes when he calls. You did not choose me, Jesus tells us. I chose you and I call you friends. Why did Jesus choose Peter and Andrew and you and me? Because he sees our potential. We can get so hung up about our sins and weakness. God sees past our sins and weaknesses weaknesses and wounds. He sees the you that you can be. He sees the you that he's creating, the you that he's calling into being. You are my well-beloved son, my well-beloved daughter. What he's asking of us today is to respond to that call. For us to say, yes, yes, I will, yes, I will follow. Let's stand now to profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as the people of God, sustained by the word of God, and called to be disciples of Christ, together let us now pray. For the church, for Christian leaders, for all who teach and preach the word of God, for this community who are gathered here, for healing between Christian churches and communities, for our own personal and private intentions. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, help us to know your ways and teach us your paths. Bless us in our daily lives as we try to follow you. We ask you to hear all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, 
we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <clears throat> to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> any bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation. But through your loving mercy, be for me protected in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Especially for those at home now, we make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll say our prayer for Christian unity as we come towards the end of the, the week of prayer, which finishes tomorrow, the week of prayer for Christian unity. God our Father, you reveal to us your love through Christ and through our brothers and sisters. Open our hearts so that we can welcome each other with our differences and live in forgiveness. Grant us to live united in one body so that the gift that is each person comes to light. May all of us together be a reflection of the living Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.